Good morning. If you're a citizen of the West, you are absolutely no stranger to the insanity that's going on with Ukraine. Many individuals from the EU to the UK and even here in the United States have, have been plagued with higher energy costs, although in the United States it isn't nothing nearly as bad as what it is in the EU and the UK. And in fact, businesses, many businesses, had to either scale down operations or close up entirely because they either couldn't get the energy that they needed or they couldn't afford the energy that they needed. Many of the citizens are facing heavy sacrifices just to be able to pay their bills. Do they skip their medicine this month or do they, do they risk facing eviction this month? They don't know where to turn. And apparently, apparently the politicians, the ones in the high castles, they don't have to worry about if they're going to get their medications. They don't have to worry about if they're going to have a place to live. They don't have to worry about if they can pay their power bill because you pay it for them. And they want to take even more of your money to send to Ukraine. I guess, I guess some of these people just do not feel like the citizens of their nations have sacrificed enough for a war that is not even possible to be won. So this article comes out of Denmark, and I'll leave a link as usual in the description and first comment to the video. This insanity is really, truly getting out of control. EU citizens must tighten belts to deter Russia, says member state. I guess there's some way that people in the EU can tighten their belts a little tighter. Maybe so, because they can't afford to eat at this point, so they're probably losing weight. They might be able to tighten their belts at this point. Says here, EU nations must prioritize defense spending by carving out money from social programs to deter Russia amid the Ukraine conflict, Danish Prime Minister Matt Fredriksen has argued. So, let me, let me rephrase that a little bit for the folks in the U.S., just in case you're told about this soon. They're probably even talking about programs they have that would be similar to our Social Security. So in other words, you know, ah, the retirees, they don't need money to live. It's more important that we send that money to the military industrial conflict or complex to, uh, to benefit the conflict, if you want to use the word benefit, uh, just so that we can make many, many more men and women die and, and suffer. Uh, and this is just absolutely mind-blowing. Says in an interview with the Financial Times on Tuesday, Fredrickson said Europe should try to avoid the mistakes of the 1930s when the continent failed to check Nazi Germany's expansion and focus on what she called a more aggressive Russia by scaling up defense. You know, de you know it goes on to, with the denazified thing. Russia says that uh, Russia has stated that one of the key objectives of the Ukraine campaign is to denazify the neighboring country. They're talking about Ukraine. It is uh, also said that the, one of the main reasons for the conflict was Kiev's failure to implement the Minsk agreements, which were designed to give the regions of Donetsk and Lugansk special status within the Ukrainian state. Now, if you don't know, uh, many, many of the people in the Ukrainian government are Nazis. They're literally Nazis. It's, it blows my mind. Former Ukrainian President um, Petro Poroshenko has since admitted that Kiev's goal regarding the agreements was to use uh, the ceasefire to buy time and create powerful armed forces, a position which was later echoed by ex-German Chancellor Angela Merkel and ex-French President Francois Hollande, who helped broker the agreement. Fredrickson urged European powers to admit that we haven't used enough money on our own defense and security since the end of the Cold War, pouring funds into welfare and tax reduction instead. So, you know, you've got all kinds of farmers that are protesting and all that because of just the nonsense. And guess what? Apparently, apparently, uh, you shouldn't have your taxes reduced. And it's not just the farmers. This is everybody. This is everybody. So if you think taxes are high or have been high, you can expect them to go higher. Why? 
Well, because who else is going to pay for this war? You think they're going to sacrifice for it? Hell no, they ain't going to sacrifice for it. He goes on to say, we need to start the conversation um, that if the world is changing in the direction I think it will, then you cannot spend your penny two times, the Prime Minister said, stressing that freedom comes with a price and it is our own responsibility to be able to protect ourselves. So let's unwrap because there's a lot in that one little paragraph there. Uh, you cannot spend your money or your penny two times? Um, okay. Then why has the governments of the West just been, I mean, it's been insane how much money that they've been spending. It is insane how much more than the GDP of the country that they have spent. And they continue to do more, especially here in the United States of America. And now you're going to tell the citizens about how they need to, you know, be more responsible and not overextend their financial situation? Holy cow. And this freedom coming with a price. I think that a lot of individuals are very aware of that. But the war that's going on in Ukraine has nothing to do with freedom. Nothing to do with freedom. Sure, maybe it might have something to do with, with some Ukrainians' freedom. But the world... The rest of us, nothing to do with freedom. Goes on to say, Fredrickson added that the Western nations have been too naive in focusing on how to get richer and not paying enough attention to countries such as Russia. Now, I will say that there is a large focus on, on the bottom line, if you will. Uh, there has been a large focus on that and... and, and these individuals with these corporations and companies don't give two dams about how much you and I struggle. Uh, they're looking for the uh, the higher profit margins, and, and that's coming through whether it would be inflation or even the more popular shrinkflation. I mean, it's it's absolutely crazy. Goes on to say the latter, she argued, has become more aggressive in all aspects, not only in Ukraine. While speculating whether Moscow would stop there, Russian President Vladimir Putin has categorically denied plans to attack NATO, saying Moscow has no interest in doing so. And I don't think that it really is in his cards, as long as NATO doesn't cross, and, and in fact, NATO's already, in my opinion, already crossed some red lines, and he still hasn't done anything. This is one of those, uh, if you will, self-fulfilling prophecies. You know, oh, they're going to attack NATO. They're going to attack NATO. So then they keep poking them until they do attack NATO. Goes on to say, Russia has for many years expressed concerns about NATO's expansion towards its borders, viewing it as an existential threat. Since the start of the Ukraine crisis in 2014, triggered by the western backed coup in Kiev, members of the U.S.-led military bloc have been steadily increasing defense spending. Earlier this month, the bloc's Secretary General forecasted it would rise to 2% of NATO's combined GDP in 2024. In 2014, Western nations imposed sanctions on Russia over Ukraine, which reached an unprecedented scale after the start of the current conflict in 2022. Moscow has argued that the restrictions are hurting EU citizens while failing to undermine Russia's economy. Several EU leaders have echoed this point, including Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban and his Slovak counterpart Robert Fico. Or Fico. I'm telling you, they are going to take everything they can from everyone that they can to fight this war, if you will. And in the end, all it's going to do is leave every single one of us vulnerable in just about every single way. But that's us, not them. Oh no, they'll still have their cost castles, they'll still have everything, the way of life that they've been living. But not us. We need to tighten our belts. Shalom. Shalom.